it's a really good way to put it. So here I'm going to put it to a sprite, okay, and I'm going to press apply. And I'm going to take that object and I drag it in here. It's a bit bigger. <laughs> we can scale it uh, easily, but it's a huge difference. Okay, and let's uh, look at that. Okay, this is a sprite, and this is uh, done with a mesh uh, render, and this is done with a sprite render. Okay, what a difference is, and uh, I'm going to show you here when we go to our overdraw. Okay, there we see the differences. Uh, the, uh, the so, so what exactly are we looking at here? Okay, so overdraw is basically the amount of pixels that are drawn on the screen mm -hmm. or on top of each other. Okay, what we see in order to draw this object, we have to actually draw all those pixels here. Mm -hmm. The two triangles form a quad yeah. 3D object. But we are uh, putting this all on the GPU to render all those uh, pixels here. Mm -hmm. And this, we're only rendering actually the object itself. Much more optimized then. Don't Way more optimized. And this is actually done because this object, when we go here to wireframe, so here we have the wireframe for this. It covers all the area here. So we're rendering actually all this alpha channel here. Mm -hmm. And here not, we remove that. We only keep the mesh for that. And it's all handled for you automatically. You just drag and drop the sprite into yep. the scene. You're good to go. Nothing to do, just drag and drop, and it all gets optimized for you. Excellent. And so, if you had done uh, 2D as your uh, default settings when you create the project, all the well, image files that you drag into your assets folder will automatically be set to sprites. Exactly. So if I go here now, to, I'm going to delete this all. I don't need this. So I'm going to go here to my uh, project settings in the editor. And we're going to change that to 2D. Okay. What happens now is when I Can import... Can you show us where that menu was again? Just uh, oh, here. emphasize it. It's under edit. Edit. Project, project settings. settings. And the editor. Editor. So it's how the, uh, the behavior of our editor. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to change. Okay. And what we're going to do is now we're going to import all that artwork in one shot. So that's really cool. Uh, you don't have to drag and drop one, one, one in there. Just grab a whole folder. I think hold the folder, drag in the asset folder, and nicely, they get imported all of them and automatically convert to a sprite. Excellent. Yeah. Very handy. So let's give it a second here. Okay. And the cool thing is, even when it's a sprite, you can always change it after us to a texture. Uh, you can duplicate it. You can use for multi purchases. Mm -hmm. So, and there we have all our uh, images now. So look, we have the environments here. So let's start to create an environment for our game here. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna take here uh, my environment and drag it in here. Okay. We don't have to have wireframe, I'm just gonna see the texture mode. So what we see is here, this is the, this viewport is my scene where I'm gonna actually make my game. Okay. This is the viewport of my game. That's the final result we see in the game itself. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna place this object here, yeah. And let's uh, take here the beginning. Okay, let's uh, take this object, drag it in here. Okay, and let's take this object here. That's the foreground. Okay, so uh, what we see is the object should be inverted, and that's really cool. You can actually just do minus one here. So you're changing the scale and the transform. Yeah. So instead of uh, in this way, I want to actually in this way. So I do it minus one. And exactly minus one would be exactly mirrored. Yeah. But actually, you can do, do it faster. You can actually select all the objects here in the scene and scale them all. Uh, no, uh, there's no transformation. So, so we're going to do it here in the in here, but we can do multi-select here and then put it all to in your scene view. Yeah, view. minus one, and that's done here now. So, and we can place it nicely, snap it to there, place it there. Okay, take this object and we're going to place it here nicely. So we have already created that uh, beginning aspect. Okay. Mm -hmm. What you start to see is here, hook here in the game, it looks incorrect. It's rendering this object in front of there. Yeah, because the game view is what your camera is seeing. And the scene yeah. view is just your editing view. Yeah. So hey, it could be more dramatic if I start to, uh, like say, I'm going to go here to my character and I take one of my characters here. Uh, in here. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to put it in the scene here. So it's flying on, uh, here on top. But here in the game, it doesn't know what's rendering in the front or in the back. So why is it that? Well, when I look here at my 2D viewport, everything is actually uh, All flat. On the same plane. Yeah. So I could move things forward, but I don't want to do that because everything was designed as flat. Mm -hmm. And if I bring things forward, it could be closer or far. I just want everything nicely flat. So what we can do for that is very simple. I'm going to show you what we're going to do. We can go to... Uh, so we're going to keep our character here for the moment. Okay. We can actually, like in Photoshop, create layers. Mm -hmm. Edit, project settings, 
And here, tax and layers. Uh, tax and layers. Was, layers. Yeah. So what we see is here, sorting layers. You're going to open There's that? a lot of different kinds of layers in Unity. So we're talking about the sorting layer specifically. Yeah. And the sorting layer just deals with sprites, right? Yeah. Uh, it's very good uh, you pointed out. Uh, the layers is actually, this one is for the scripting part. Mm -hmm. We're going to maybe see later if, if I have uh, much more time. But I'm pretty sure uh, the team members will cover it over the next two days. We're not going to worry about it for now. <laughs> now. And we have here the uh, sorting layers. Okay. And what we're going to do, we're going to add here two layers. We can maybe call it here the uh, level itself. And then here a the uh, like the foreground that could be our character, okay. So look here our character. You're gonna select our character now and say like actually when you render in the layer, mm -hmm. you're gonna render in the foreground. And the other objects you can multi-select them and say yeah, actually in the layer level. So this shows already our character okay, nicely being in the front of this. So it's gonna render all of the sprites that are in the background layer. And then it will render all of the sprites in the foreground layer, yeah. which will then mean that the foreground layer is drawn last, and thus it's on top of everything. Correct. So you can let me go back here to our tags and layers. What we see is here, the foreground layer is layer two, is rendered on top of the mm -hmm. layer level. And you can drag in, uh, those around too if you have yeah. a bunch of layers and you want to sort them more specifically. This is actually something I want to point out. Uh, by default, if you create something, it will be created in a default layer. So I don't want that, I, uh, because. In the default layer, it will show it always in the background. Behind the level. Yes, exactly. So what I'm going to do, it's just going to drag and drop it in the foreground. So when we import something new, it will be always put in the foreground so we can see it. We don't have to worry where it is, the object. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when we uh, look at this object, maybe, we can. this object should be in front of our character. So we can create another layer, foreground. So we're going to go to our, hey, maybe, uh, here, uh, editor. I'm sorry, to the tags and layers. I'm going to go to the correct menu, open this, and uh, let's name, rename this character here. So we're going to have four layers yeah. this time. We'll have level, yeah. character, um, default, and now foreground. Yeah. So what I'm going to put my character in the layer character here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then this one in the foreground. So that way the foreground is in front of the character. Yeah. So now look nicely, my character will come when it comes in the scene. It's in between. In between, exactly. There's one problem we have though. Look, I'm going to show you here. I'm going to take one of the other uh, environment objects. Let's say uh, this object. We're going to drag it in here. We also do minus one. Okay. And I place it here. Okay. Um, and it's by default on the default layer, which is above the character layer. Yeah. So what we're going to do is just put it in the level one. Mm -hmm. Okay, but what now is when we put it over there, sometimes uh, uh, we don't know if it should be nice in front a little bit or in the background. And especially here with this object also, this is sometimes, you see now it's rendering in the back, it's rendering in the front. I want to specify that. Mm -hmm. Okay, but what I don't want to do is create like tons of layers like le level one, level two, level four. It will be too much to, uh, to manage that. Yeah, that would be a crazy amount of layers. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really simple in Unity what they did. A very smart trick here, look here. If I select this object here, uh, this object here, okay, what we have here is in the sorting layer, it's set to zero. So in the layer itself, we can sort it again. So it's set to zero. If I'm going to take this one and I'm going to say, well, I'm going to put it to one, one up. Press enter. It's just an integer value. Yeah, it's an integer value. Yeah, it's great. All numbers. Yeah. So now look, it nicely renders always on top of that. So it always renders ones on top of zeros. Yeah. So the higher the number, the closer to the camera basically rendered, but it will stay in that layer. So this foreground layer will always render on top of that. So in that way, we can easily create here nice structured levels. Mm -hmm. And let's add a little bit more elements to it. We're gonna go here to our environment. And let's say, uh, look, I'm gonna take another object here. Maybe uh, this one again. Okay, I'm gonna scale it minus one. No, oh, I'm doing everything. Let's select this one, minus one. Okay, nice. We're going to place it here. Okay. And oh, one of the artists we used, uh, Curtis, I'm going to drag and drop this object in here. Or I think this object, so we can do a little bit of differences in there. Place this, you know, delete this one. Select this one. And we're going to place it there. And nicely, we can start. Uh, cover up that window. Yeah. 
So now we're gonna do, we're gonna select multiple objects here. So we're gonna select this one and this one and this one. Make and sure they're all in the level sorting layer. Yeah, it's really good. So what we do here, we're gonna put it to level and take this object and put it one up again also. So nicely, it's always on, on top of rendering there. Mm -hmm. So it's always gonna be on top of things that are rendered at zero. Yeah. So what you can do this, duplicate, you can all multi-select also in Unity and duplicate that and place it here. Oh, look at that, we extend the corridor very easily. Yeah, and we're gonna place it here. And that's how we start to create our level here. Simple, simple, okay. Uh, always save. I'm gonna save my scene and I'm gonna call it to... Uh, yeah, it's always good to remember to save. Yeah, software has never crashed. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we have here our level now created. Uh, what are I gonna do? I'm gonna create like one little button so I can select all the objects in one shot so I don't have to multi-select it always. Mm -hmm. So we're going to create here an empty object. Okay, place it here. This is a brand new game object that appears yeah. in the hierarchy. Yeah, so it's a, an empty object. It just has a transform on it. Mm -hmm. okay. What we're going to do, we're going to select all those objects from the environment and drag it just like a Windows Explorer in that object. So it's, when I select this object, I can select it as all. So when you move the, the parent game object, it moves all of the children yeah. and thus keeps the level piece yeah. together. Well, the problem is that I don't see that object. It's hard to find it in the scene if I want to select it. So we're going to create a simple button for that. And how you do that is here. There's, uh, you have this uh, cube here. Mm -hmm. okay. When I click on that cube, uh, I can create a button for it. Let's say here, a blue button. And now we can call it. Now, is that going to appear in my game, that blue button? That's a very good question. Uh, no, that's the real beauty. And so it uh, appears here. And when I move that object, you will never see it in the game itself. You can make it visible uh, by uh, activating the gizmos here. So Just for debugging purposes. Debugging, yeah, exactly. So now we're going to place it here. Okay, uh, my camera. Okay, you can place it here in the beginning a little bit. We can the we can change that to ortho. So right now it's perspective. Mm -hmm. We can put it to ortho, and then we can change the so size. So perspective camera is you're seeing from a three dimensional point of view. So objects that are farther away will seem farther away than objects that are closer to the camera, whereas orthographic kind of removes that entire z-axis and smashes everything down flat. Yeah, and because we are making a 2D game, we really want everything flat because in Photoshop, our artists designed it and totally flat. So what mm -hmm. we want to do is we want to keep that flatness there. Okay, So that's why I changed my camera. You can nicely see that here. When I go to a 3D viewport, this is the camera in 2D. If I change the camera to perspective, it's like an, uh, you see the, it's uh, this perspective eye here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Put it back to ortho, and there we have it. Okay, I'm gonna go back to 2D. And there we have nicely our level already created uh, with our, hey, the beginning of our character. Okay, And I don't need my character for the moment. We're gonna delete that. Okay. Okay. So this is uh, the beginning of our level. Let's uh, put uh, uh, the props in there that we might be able to pick up. So I have somewhere a fuel can here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, let me go here to, uh, I have here a fuel can here. Okay, but what I see right away, and I'm gonna delete this for the moment because I don't need those objects here. Okay, okay, this is really interesting now. What we see is the artist create a sequence of images, and when I play them fast, actually, I get the impression that it's spinning. Spinning. If I take one image in there and I place it here, and I'm gonna press play, nothing will happen. It's, it's just it's one. It's just a single frame of that animation. Yeah. So what we want to do is we want to rotate that. Hey, we want to have that same animation. We want to have that sequence of images. Mm -hmm. So how can we do that? This is fantastic done. It's mind blowing. I find you select the first one and you select the last one. And you drag and drop all those images in one shot here. And now it's just, is that an animation? It's actually a sequence of playing those images. Yeah, I can say uh, fuel can, fuel can rotation. So it automatically generates an animation, which is why it's prompting you to save. Yeah. So maybe I can uh, make it a little bit bigger so we can basically better see it on the screen. Okay. Okay. And when I press no play, what we see is this object is nicely... Now it's spinning with all the images. Yeah. How can I see that? Look here, I can select an object and I can go to the Windows animation here. Window, animation, you get the window here. And I can now scrub in the timeline here. So we see nicely the animation when I open this here. Each of those little... Uh, Diamonds represent one frame of the animation. Yeah, this is actually called a keyframe, and each of those keyframes represents one of those images. And here we have the sample rate, the speed. I can change that if I want to rotate faster. I can put it to 24. So when I press play, it run, r runs much faster. So pretty cool to have this already. Very handy. Yeah.
Okay, so we have one of the collectible objects in, pla in place there. Let's put the laser tags in there. Okay, let's go to the obstacles. And we should have somewhere here the laser. 